Hi, Hal. Bonjour à tous. So, uh, good uh, morning, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, can every, everyone can hear me now? Yes, can the panelists can maybe Hi, confirm? Bonjour. Bonjour. Okay. Bonjour. Uh, we're going to start. So, uh, a quick word about interpretation for those that are attending. You should see at the bottom of your screen on the right part, uh, icon, uh, which in French is interpretation. In English would be uh, the, um, live translation or translation. Uh, you can click on this and uh, you can choose the language you want to hear the webinar in. So there's going to be a translation during all the webinar during the, uh, uh, so there's going to be a translation in French and in English. So uh, for all panelists, when you're not speaking, please make sure to close your microphone so we don't have any, uh, any background noise. And uh, with that being said, uh, Ms., uh, Mr. Emini, the floor is yours. So have a good webinar. Thank you very much to all. Okay, thank you. So uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. But I think that I'm going to recall what Manuel has just uh, said before we begin this uh, discussion. So we should ensure that uh, if uh, you want the interpretation, you have a, a button on the bottom of your screen. So you choose the language you want to hear. And also uh, be aware of the, fast, of the fact that uh, we are broadcasting this event live on our Facebook page. We are also recording it and we'll share it on our YouTube channel and website. So now uh, we are going to, to begin. Dear ladies and uh, gentlemen, welcome again uh, to this webinar on investing in women, improving women's employment in sub-Saharan Africa. This is part of a series of webinars that the Partnership for Economic Policy uh, Research Network is organizing on the sidelines of the celebration of International Women's Day. It is now over a uh, hundred years, more than a uh, hundred years after Women's Day was observed for the first time in uh, 1911. Since then, several international and national initiatives have been taken, all aimed at women's empowerment and gender equity. Reflecting the importance of investing in women for development. Despite this worldwide awareness, and although subsequent progress in recent decades, achieving the aforesaid goals remains a major challenge. One of the areas where this challenge is very tremendous is that of women employment. Indeed, women represent about 70% of the world's poor, earn 23% less than men globally, and nearly 60% of women work in the informal economy. In most sub-Saharan Africa countries, women's participation rate in formal employment remains incredibly low, meaning they are earning less, saving less and at a greater risk of falling into poverty than men. Even when employment rates rise, women tend to benefit less, which increases the gender gap. Yet, improving women's employment is a key and vital step towards development in general and particularly towards the goal of gender equity. So this afternoon, we have uh, three speakers that are going to tell us what can be done to, uh, to, to, to bridge the gap. So we have from uh, Zambia, we have Bupe Simutimba, 
you have from Senegal, you have Antangon, and uh, from the Democratic uh, Republic of uh, Congo, Zizina Shabani Zita Maua. So we are going to begin with uh, Bupe. And uh, Bupe is uh, a lecturer at the University of Zambia. So we start with you and we want to know why is improving women's employment an important issue for your country? Please, you have the floor. Okay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Amin. Uh, so why do we need to improve women's employment in Zambia and Africa as well? So one key area recognized to empower women is through their participation in the labor market. The distinct gap that exists with regards to earning the clustering of women in less than decent jobs continues to be a challenge. Women are pushed in jobs that provide low to no earnings, poor working condition with no social protection or any form of entitlement. One way to invest in women is to encourage them to participate in the labor market through the adoption and implementation of more gender aware strategies. In most sub-Saharan African countries, the unemployment rate for women has been higher than that of men since 2010. In 2019, the unemployment rate for women was 7.5%, while that for men was 6.3%. For women who do enter the labor market, they're more concentrated in informal employment. In Africa, in 2019, 79% of women have informal employment compared to 68% of men. Interestingly, in Zambia, in 2018, 42.6% of those with informal employment were women, while 57.6% were men. Of the total number of people with formal employment, only 28.7% were women, while 71.3% were men. This is coming from a backdrop that sees less women being employed with only 38.1% compared to the 61.9% being men. So now various factors have been put forward to explain the poor absorption of women in formal employment. These include the social norms and the perception by society that women are more suited for care work. Uh, women are perceived to be more suited for labor intensive, low skill job with high turnover. Apart from that, the structure of the economy will lead to favor more investment in capital intensive sectors such as mining, construction, manufacturing, with more men being employed than women. Apart from that, also various economic policies implemented, such as inflation reduction, that usually affect employment negatively, prove to cause more women than men to lose jobs. Also, on top of all these, you also have the transformation of the economy due to negative production shocks. As of 2018, the Zambian economy underwent some transformation that saw more men being employed in all sectors, apart from the non-governmental organization that employed 52.6% men compared to 47.4% men, sorry, 52.6% women compared to 47.4% being men. Surprisingly, this included the agriculture sector, which had only 36.7% being female compared to 63.3% being male. The consequences of having fewer women with formal employment is the low earning, which translates in wider income gap. In 2019, a higher percentage of men of about 70.9% were paid cash compared to women with only 57.2%. This can affect their access to credit or finance and limit the opportunities to make investment. This therefore increases the vulnerability and reduces their bargaining power in the labor market. Thank you, Dr. Amin. Okay. Merci, uh, Dr. Simon Timba. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Simon Timba, for this uh, first uh, uh, comment. I'm going to give the floor uh, to uh, uh, Anton Goma from uh, Senegal, but please allow me before I give the floor to uh, Anton Goma to specify that uh, 
the uh, participants can ask uh, questions to the panelists at any time uh, during uh, the, the webinar. Uh, but uh, it would only be at the end uh, of uh, the presentations uh, by the uh, panelists uh, that uh, the answers uh, will be given. And um, we should also keep in mind that uh, this is a public uh, session and uh, uh, it is, uh, we don't have to mind you, we have to be uh, courteous uh, and we have to uh, remain very close uh, to our subject. If there's inappropriate uh, content, uh, that content will be deleted uh, immediately, but we do think that um, that will not be the case. And so I'd like to come back now uh, to Dr. Uh, Anton Gomez, she is a, a researcher at uh, the University of Sheikh and Diopa in uh, Dakar in uh, uh, Senegal. And I'd like to ask you, uh, Dr. Goma, the same uh, question. Uh, why is it that the improvement uh, of uh, women's uh, employment uh, would be considered an important uh, consideration in your country as of today? Can you speak to that, please? Uh, you do have the floor. Please put on your microphone, uh, Dr. Goma. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Emini, for having given me the floor. And uh, allow me, uh, first of all, to uh, thank uh, the organizers uh, of uh, this uh, very important uh, webinar, and uh, which uh, is going to talk about uh, the importance uh, of uh, women's uh, uh, employment. And this is a, a very important uh, problem for most of our countries. I don't need to come back uh, uh, to some of the issues that have uh, been raised. And I'm going to uh, just uh, uh, explain uh, what the context in Senegal is. Uh, of course, as I was saying a short while ago, the problem of uh, employment uh, generally, and in specifically the employment uh, of women is a major uh, problem for all countries. Uh, and so the, the context uh, in uh, Senegal, uh, the, this uh, is, uh, we have actually looked at the issue of the employment of women. Now, if you look at it from the statistical point of view, the data from the national uh, researcher in uh, Senegal, uh, um, the, uh, um, the, the uh, data uh, in the Bureau of Statistics uh, shows uh, that there is a lower participation of uh, women in uh, the labor market uh, in uh, comparison uh, to men, 50%, uh, uh, 50% of uh, participation, or rather, uh, 60 by women and less than 50 percent for women now uh, and, and that applies more to salaried work uh, men uh, the, the, the the rate of women in uh, participation uh, that, that men participate more in paid uh, uh, labor than, than salaried uh, labor uh, and as uh, uh, concerns uh, the participation of women in the labor market. Let's go even further and demonstrate uh, as uh, uh, concerns uh, uh, the unemployment level, the rate of an unemployment of women is uh, twice as high as the rate for men. Uh, we have uh, um, we have uh, from the, the statistics uh, um, bureau, uh, uh, they have uh, shown that uh, the rate of unemployment of women is uh, about 27% uh, vis a vis 8% for men. And this is a demonstration that uh, it is important uh, to talk about uh, improving the employment of uh, women in our country, considering uh, that in terms of uh, the uh, rate of uh, participation of women. Uh, the participation of women in the labor market uh, has been, been shown to be very the, the sidelined and therefore it is important to talk about improving uh, women's employment uh, in Senegal. Let me stop there please, thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, Dr. Ngom and uh, I am now going to give the floor to, to Madam Zizina Jabani Zita Maua uh, from uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. And uh, I would like uh, to know what the situation is in your country. Do you have uh, specific information to share with us uh, as uh, concerns uh, the importance uh, of um, uh, women's uh, employment? You do have the floor. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, uh, every, uh, Dr. Emini and everyone else. And thank you very much for having given me uh, the floor. Before I answer this question, I would like to uh, thank uh, the, 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 the committee, the organizing committee. I, and also uh, to talk about uh, the theme, which is uh, very uh, up to date. Uh, and and uh, those have spoken before me have already said uh, and uh, the employability of women and the underrepresentation of women in sub-Saharan uh, sub Africa. 
and uh, uh, we have heard uh, about the situation in Senegal, in Zambia, I would like to add that as far as uh, the context of the DRC is concerned at our level, we note uh, that uh, the labor market uh, in uh, uh, Congolese uh, is uh, marked uh, by inequalities uh, in spite of uh, the signing of a number of international uh, uh, agreements uh, on uh, the on gender uh, equality uh, by our, our country, we, st we notice uh, that still there is this underrepresentation of women in the employment market in the Congo. And if you look at the statistics from the recent survey that was undertaken by the Bureau of Statistics, the National Bureau of Statistics, those data show that the rate of access of women to employment is at about 58.9% as opposed to 64.4% for men. And now as far as unemployment is concerned, we notice that it is women who are more affected by unemployment, generally speaking, more than the men with a rate of 19.6% against 15.2 for men. Now, as, as far as the remuneration is concerned, this, this women survey shows that, that on average, the women earn uh, about 50% of the salary earned by men. Let us notice that, that uh, there's a low participation of women in the labor market. Uh, you add also the, 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 the weakness of um, the, um, the, 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 the economy. And uh, even there is, for example, uh, the, the mining sector represents 20% uh, and 80% uh, of uh, a total export of the Congo. And so when there is, uh, 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 there, there is a lack of these uh, raw materials, there has always been negative uh, uh, repercussions on the entire national uh, economy, which uh, then is going to have an impact, a negative uh, impact uh, on uh, certain uh, levels of uh, the uh, population, uh, the most uh, vulnerable, especially women who are already uh, a minority, they're already underrepresented in the labor market. You will therefore understand that it is necessary to come up with the policies that would focus, focus the policies that would promote the employment of women in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Zizina. And I think, I hope that. Uh, uh, you have uh, you have actually shown uh, all of you uh, ladies that there is a problem and the, our objective this afternoon is not just to turn around the problem to say that it does exist what we would like to know is whether there are solutions uh, are there solutions uh, to respond uh, to this issue and that's why I'm going to ask you now uh, this question the following question and it is this what measures what uh, policy measures uh, uh, could you suggest uh, be put in place uh, in order to improve uh, women's employment in a country. Let me start uh, with the doctor uh, with the doctor Simu Chimba. So the question is, uh, what policy measures? Speaking in English. Okay. Dr. Thank Simu you, Doctor Amin. Uh, so, okay. Thank you, Doctor Amin. So, um, what? Uh, I would suggest is to empower women in a way that will be an investment and will accrue a return in form of improved welfare for households and equal distribution of jobs and improve their bargaining power. So what I would suggest is something that is building on what already exists in Zambia, although what is currently being implemented is mainly focused towards persons with disabilities. What we're suggested is a wage subsidy. So this wage subsidy, what it will do is that it will have the possibility of improving women's employability and competitiveness, especially for women graduating from tertiary education, because it has been found that long-term career choices are made as soon as graduates enter the labor market. Women are sorted into informal jobs with less long-term capital investment leading to permanent divergence between men and women's labor market outcomes, as well as well-being. It will also improve the future chances in the labor market or through the confidence and the skills and the training they acquire by having some formal employment. What our study uh, findings suggests is that implementing a wage subsidy leads to a 27.8% reduction of skilled women with informal employment. Overall, the wage subsidy will give women an opportunity to earn a better salary by having formal employment. Our findings suggest that women in informal employment also benefited through an increase in income arising from the improvement in the economy. Apart from the direct effect of this wage subsidy on women, 
It can also lead to companies who want to access this subsidy program to formalize their operation. This has been seen in Turkey. A wage subsidy program can also lead to transformation of parts of the economy in such a way that it experiences a shift to high value added sectors such as agro-processing, manufacturing, and other industries. This can be beneficial to the GDP of the country. Our findings suggest that implementing a wage subsidy leads to an increase in GDP of 1.4%. Our findings also suggest that implementing the wage subsidy in sectors that already employ a large number of female workers will increase the success of this program. Sectors such as the HUSA, transport, accommodation, financial, and education sectors. Uh, that is my submission. Thank you so much. Merci. Uh, Thank you very much. I'm going to ask uh, the same uh, question uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, Mrs. Shabani. Can she uh, tell us what measures uh, could improve uh, the employment uh, of uh, women uh, in the context uh, of your country, the Democratic Republic of the Congo? You have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Emini, yet once again for having given me uh, the floor. And, uh, and I would like to point out uh, uh, in uh, passing that uh, in addition uh, to the National Strategic Plan, which was uh, validated uh, last uh, December, there have been other government uh, policies that have been put in place and which have uh, existed uh, in the past and which uh, targeted uh, reform and uh, the reduction of gender inequalities, uh, but the results uh, were, were, were not uh, very promising. We can, for example, talk about uh, the, the agricultural policy, this was uh, the policy document, the, the basic uh, uh, poly agricultural policy document uh, that was uh, targeting agriculture and which was looking at uh, improving employment of women. And now there are other policies that we can talk about uh, the uh, program by the president of uh, the, uh, of, uh, the uh, of the president, 100, uh, uh, 100 uh, uh, places we talked about uh, uh, infrastructures, uh, health, education, water and electricity, uh, habitat, uh, and uh, it mentioned uh, the importance of employment in all those different uh, sectors. But in spite of all those programs that were put in place, uh, they did not talk, they did not mention the improvement of um, the employment of women in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. As has already been pointed out, uh, there is uh, the problem of gender inequality. So what are the main uh, causes of that? That the uh, Ministry of uh, Gender, Family and uh, Children uh, says that amongst uh, the main uh, causes of these inequalities, uh, we can mention uh, uh, the, the, the kind of discrimination that women are confronted with, especially um, when uh, we talk about uh, them being involved in the active uh, sectors uh, and uh, the fact uh, that women don't have access uh, to land, uh, they do not have access uh, to financing, uh, to financial capital, and that does not make it possible for them uh, to participate uh, uh, so as uh, to be able to improve uh, their, their, their their contribution uh, to the employment uh, market. Uh, and considering that uh, the agricultural sector was the first one that was targeted, targeted in the national strategic uh, uh, policy, we thought it would be useful to target policies in that sector because it is uh, the main sector that uh, uh, women work in uh, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and so on. We, would, uh, we suggested uh, two uh, policies that reduce uh, the inequalities. Uh, uh, first of all, to increase uh, a land that women have access to. Why? Because uh, there are uh, certain uh, traditional and customary uh, practices uh, that meant that women uh, could not uh, buy land, uh, could not own uh, land, uh, and they could only uh, benefit uh, only if they went uh, through their husbands. Uh, and therefore, the policy that we suggested is that we increase uh, the um, that, that, that the government uh, gives more money to rural households uh, because we noticed that uh, generally speaking, um, agricultural uh, farmers uh, uh, confronted uh, to the problem of uh, financing. And uh, when we look at uh, the, the, the conclusions that we came up with, uh, we uh, suggested 40% uh, of the land allocated uh, to women uh, because it would increase uh, 
not only for 4.6 at the level of production, agricultural production, but uh, it would increase uh, the employment of women up to, to 15.48% uh, in uh, the agricultural and uh, subsistence uh, farming uh, sectors. Uh, let us point out that uh, the ownership of land would help women to become more autonomous and that would be translated into them having more opportunities, uh, becoming more, uh, accessing greater employment. And that would mean that uh, they could uh, reinvent uh, their resources uh, to other investments, uh, other policies uh, that I'd like to suggest uh, in light of uh, the conclusions that we arrived at, we suggested uh, that there be an increase, 100% increase, in other words, a doubling of uh, the, 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 the salaries uh, from the government to the rural uh, to the rural households and that uh, would increase uh, the income household level and especially those headed uh, by women and that policy would uh, uh, strengthen uh, the, the capacity of uh, rural uh, farmers uh, generally speaking and more specifically um, those uh, uh, and especially where women work so that uh, uh, we can uh, get around uh, the, uh, the, the, the the problem of uh, women accessing uh, uh, agriculture and, uh, and, and increase uh, the general uh, growth of agriculture in the Democratic Republic of uh, uh, the Congo as uh, is a uh, desired in the National uh, Development and Strategic Plan. Thank you very much. Well, thank you uh, very much uh, for these uh, proposals. And uh, we are going to listen to Dr. Dr. Ngong. What are the measures that you would suggest so that we can resolve the problem? We have identified the problem and how can we resolve that problem? Please do take the floor, Dr. Ngoma. Thank you very much yet once again, Dr. Amini, for giving me the floor. And as, uh, as, as, as has already been said, as, as those, who have, those who have spoken before me have said, uh, there are uh, policy measures that uh, will target uh, the improvement of women's employment. Uh, but of course, we have uh, to say that at the beginning, there were uh, programs and uh, there were uh, projects uh, that had been put in place uh, with the uh, intention of uh, resolving uh, uh, the problem of employment uh, generally, but more specifically women's employment. And uh, we can uh, give an example. Uh, the national fund uh, uh, for the uh, uh, for for women's uh, uh, employment. Uh, this is a program that has been in place uh, since uh, 2014, uh, and uh, that uh, fund uh, did uh, uh, favor the employment of women and facilitated access of women to finance uh, to financing, uh, so that uh, women uh, could uh, also. Uh, be involved in uh, uh, revenue uh, making activities uh, and between uh, 2005 and 2000 uh, and, uh, and and 12 uh, uh, the national uh, center came up with a number of uh, uh, projects at about uh, 4 billion uh, cfa and uh, that fund also uh, made it uh, possible to uh, set up uh, uh, made it uh, possible to increase uh, we can also uh, look at other initiatives. Which has been around since uh, 2018. We have financial constraints for women uh, who want to go into these activities. And the other the other uh, challenge is uh, uh, to create uh, 100,000 jobs or direct and 200,000 uh, indirect jobs. And uh, these uh, funds that uh, helped women to uh, get into some activities uh, led to about uh, 50 uh, jobs uh, in spite of these initiatives taken by the Senegalese, uh, the Senegalese government. Uh, we note that uh, women are not uh, getting a lot of uh, 
employment. And we do need to take other measures to be able to create more jobs for women. There are other uh, policy options. Uh, that is uh, a reduction of uh, uh, taxation on whatever women produce uh, to reduce uh, the uh, problem that they have when it comes to getting employment. I think this uh, led to the creation of uh, about 7,000 jobs and 54 percent went to women. But we looked at another uh, policy option that is uh, an, a policy that would support uh, women. And uh, as far as uh, uh, the outcome was concerned, uh, we were able uh, to create a three times more employment. And the employment uh, that is going to be uh, created through this uh, option that is a subsidy for uh, women's uh, uh, salaries, we were able to create uh, more than 300,000 uh, jobs jobs that went to women. And we think uh, that uh, this is the best uh, policy option to enable the government uh, to solve uh, the problem of uh, women employment. And the government uh, could uh, suggest, uh, for example, uh, that uh, if you wanted to recruit more women, we, we could come up with uh, some uh, uh, allocation for enterprises so that they employ uh, more women. And the government could say, <laughs> You, you will uh, get uh, uh, those enterprises or firms to say that uh, you, you will tell them that you will only benefit from this, uh, 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 this uh, allocation as long as you employ more women, because that is going to or enable us uh, to reduce uh, gender inequalities on the labor market. In, in the, uh, particularly in the Senegalese labor market. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much for these uh, proposals, for your contribution. But we could want to find out if these uh, uh, policies uh, can be applied in our countries, particularly in Senegal. What kind of uh, framework do you need uh, to be able to apply these uh, proposals? Are there any programs? Programs? Are there any strategies which uh, uh, could uh, 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 enable you to apply these uh, proposals? There's also the issue of uh, uh, feasibility. Are these uh, uh, policies really implementable? Are there any, are there not uh, constraints such as financial uh, constraints? How would uh, these uh, uh, policies be implemented in your country. I'd start with Dr. Ngom. Uh, there, we do have a framework. We need to know that uh, for uh, 20, 2014, we have adopted an economic policy, a social economic policy. And uh, this is for sustainable economic uh, development. Uh, the objective and the strategy that takes into consideration women employment is uh, taking into consideration women's employment. Uh, and in this uh, framework, we want to empower me, women through capacity building and that in 
leads uh, to an increase in the rate of employment of uh, women uh, up, up, up to 34 or percent that we had in 2016 and this uh, program which is going to take into consideration women or rather uh, take into consideration the gender dimension i think uh, this uh, would be uh, uh, mainstreaming the gender uh, issue. And I think it is going to produce uh, positive results. Uh, this, uh, my, co my Zambian colleague did uh, mention uh, the subsidy to women's uh, salaries. And we adopted uh, this kind of uh, uh, policy that is uh, going to enable us uh, to reduce uh, the cost of uh, coming up with employment, but it will also improve uh, the working conditions for women. And it is going to cost a lot to the Senegalese uh, government, but it is uh, going to enable us uh, to uh, have uh, transfers, uh, money transfers. And we think that if the government uh, could uh, take uh, this uh, route, uh, the, both for the youth and for women, the, the, we all know that uh, the government is not the one to provide, uh, uh, to, to create employment, but it is going to put into place policies that will lead to the creation of employment and solve the problem of women employment. We do encourage this kind of policy, given that we have a, a, a framework that will enable us to do that. But also we need to think of sustainability. Uh, it, it will depend on the measures, but we have shown that uh, with this uh, uh, policy, there would be improvement uh, in employment uh, in general, but particularly for women. And we want to be able to adopt this policy that we find most favorable. But before we talk to the Democratic Republic of Congo, could this plan that you are talking about make available funds that could be used for gender equity? The Senegalese government is uh, looking into uh, getting about uh, 400 uh, billion uh, safer francs. Uh, and this is going to fund the different strategic options that have been adopted. If these funds, if the government is going to mobilize these funds to be able uh, to, uh, to, to solve the problem of women employment, uh, that uh, could solve the problem. Uh, these uh, funds that uh, the government is going to mobilize, uh, they, uh, we, uh, we have been working on that for three years and it, uh, it is continuing. And uh, we want uh, to uh, see how we can do that for the second phase of the program. So it is going to enable us to correct the dysfunction that we have observed on the labor market. But we can also use the, these funds uh, to bring about uh, equity. Okay. 
Act on the labor market. Thank you very much for your contribution. I think uh, that uh, Madame Shabani has something to say about uh, the framework through which uh, the recommendations that she has made could be implemented. You have the floor, Zizina. Thank you very much, Dr. Emini. As uh, I said a few minutes back, uh, there is a fragility in the Congolese economy and there is also fragility as far as uh, gender equity is concerned. The government uh, came up with a national strategic plan for uh, the country's development and uh, there is uh, an objective to diversify the economy uh, so that uh, the non-mining sector of the sectors of the economy can also grow. So these are agricultural sectors uh, and, uh, uh, and at the same time, there's promotion of employment uh, in other uh, areas but uh, the uh, uh, agricultural sector is uh, prioritized. I want to point out that the government uh, does not have any problem of land. Uh, this is the second uh, country in the world to have uh, a lot of uh, land, uh, a land that is available. And uh, We have about uh, 80 million hectares of land, but uh, the land that belongs to women is very limited. So uh, you will understand that uh, the problem of availability of land does not arise and as far as uh, sustainability is uh, concerned, there, uh, this plan that is already adopted, uh, we are reviewing that because there is a review. It is in 2021 that we are going to review that uh, uh, national strategic plan, and uh, this is an opportunity for us uh, to uh, suggest that uh, an increase in land uh, that is made available to women. And so, so we do need to have uh, 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 diversification and transformation of the economy. Now, as far as uh, uh, money transfers are concerned, we suggested that uh, we should add in the third uh, pillar of this uh, strategic plan, which is uh, which deals with employment for women and the youth, we want uh, to add that. This is uh, in summary what I would like uh, to add to this issue of the framework. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Zizina. We hope uh, that uh, it will be implemented, but uh, we also have uh, the case uh, of Zambia, uh, Ebupe, and we would like to know to what extent uh, the proposals that she's making can be uh, uh, accepted by uh, policy makers. Uh, fit into your country's existing policies, programs or strategies. You have the floor, please. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ray. So as we've heard from the other panelists, we've seen that government are now ready to implement gender aware policies and they are willing to do that. And in such a way, they are factoring it in their development plan. This is no different with what is happening in Zambia. 
The government in Zambia does have a development plan and their focus and one of their objectives is to empower women. And they have noticed that one way to empower women is to allow them to have some form of formal employment. And as such, we have found that they have put forward strategies such as job creation, especially in the tourism and manufacturing sector, mainstreaming of gender in public institutions and increasing the number of women undergoing training and reaching higher levels of education. So the wage subsidy can actually complement these policies that the government is putting uh, forward. Apart from that, our interaction with policymakers have shown that they're willing to consider such a policy uh, because for them it's something new, something innovative, and they're willing to actually try it on. However, they have actually acknowledged that it needs careful design before it is implemented, and it also needs uh, careful understanding. Apart from that, we are talking of a wage subsidy, a wage subsidy which is specifically focusing on women. That means that it comes with certain challenges. For example, you'll find that uh, there is going to be a possibility of unsubsidized workers being replaced by uh, subsidized workers. Apart from that, employers may not be aware of what really a wage subsidy is. So this will translate in low take up rate. In order to have it been successful, what we are suggesting is that this wage subsidy should go hand in hand with good advertising of programs, as well as having simplicity in terms of its design to avoid low take up rates. The issue of who pays, where is the money going to come from? So with regards to that, we can suggest that policymakers can choose to mobilize funds from external sources this is something that has been seen in uh, Jordan. They've implemented a wage subsidy focusing on women, and they actually uh, mobilize uh, funds through external uh, sources. Apart from that, they can also try to transfer a certain amount and from payroll tax, or they can actually get some funds from um, the corporate taxes, uh, that is in increasing the corporate taxes. However, Whatever is done, what our studies show was that it will not adversely affect uh, male workers, which is very important. And uh, based on our research finding, we actually showed and we actually found that the cost of the wage subsidy appeared to be minimal compared to the benefit uh, that can accrue through the improved incomes that uh, women will have, increased production in most sectors of the economy uh, due to reduced uh, cost of uh, production by employing women who are subsidized, as well as increased GDP. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, those are my suggestions. Yeah, merci, uh, cher uh, panelists. Thank you very much, uh, dear panelists. Uh, I am going to now open the floor for questions, but I will start with mine. I thank you very much for your contributions. So we are going to hear questions from the other uh, participants. We do apologize for the sound quality. I think there are connection problems. I do hope that you can follow what is being said. We have received a number of questions already. You could uh, uh, continue with the asking the questions, uh, but the, there is a question from Dr. Kitan, Gitandi from the uh, DRC. I hope uh, that uh, uh, these uh, issues have already uh, been uh, tackled. Uh, he would, how can uh, women employment affect uh, inequalities and uh, general uh, development? I think if, uh, I think Dr. Kitansi could re uh, respond to that, but if there is a panelist that has something to add uh, to what has been said, uh, you can uh, take the floor. Maybe Bupe or Zizina could very quickly uh, respond to the matter that has been raised. 
Yes, is there anybody who wishes to take the floor on this? Yes. Yes, Zizina. Yes, uh, be brief, please. Thank you very much for giving me the floor. And I would also like to thank Dr. Kitansi for having asked a very pertinent question. To uh, respond to his concern, we said, for example, that uh, after analysis and simulation of the findings, we found that for the DRC, an increase of 40% of land uh, that goes to women, if we give um, 40% more of land uh, to uh, women, we are going to see an increase in production and in turn, uh, that is going to lead to women employability and that would uh, reduce uh, gender inequality on uh, the labor market. Thank you. Thank you. I do not know. Uh, Dr. Chitani is not uh, there here, but uh, his uh, question was uh, asked uh, quite some time back. I think uh, he didn't want uh, to stop you as you were talking. But since we were with you, Zizina, there is another uh, question the, from Latin Aden, who would like to know, according to you, what would be the factors uh, that uh, limit uh, land distribution uh, in Congo that does not favor uh, women? Could Do you have uh, uh, some idea of the factors that lead to this situation? You, have you uh, got the question, Zizina? Now, as far as uh, uh, the, the limitations that women have with respect to access to land, is it uh, a cultural uh, phenomenon or is there another explanation that you could uh, give for that? Yes, as I said, we do not have a land problem in DRC, but the problem is, is, is more of a social cultural nature than so it is a cultural and a traditional problem. Women cannot acquire land. They could only own land through their husbands. Inheritance goes to men and the women cannot. So it's a more of a social cultural problem than anything else. So I can see that uh, there is Mr. Arsene Akbar, who would like to know, because we have talked about uh, the how women are uh, how there is inequality between men and women, and we would like to know. Why, what are the factors that uh, affect uh, women's access to employment? Maybe in one minute, another uh, panelist uh, could uh, tell us very briefly what uh, uh, prevents women from having access to the labor market uh, on equal terms with men. Yes. There are, there are constraints. We can talk about uh, culture. 
ces Sénégalises uh, community is mainly patriarchal. It is the man who makes the orders and uh, the women have to engage in domestic work. So uh, culturally, there are those uh, 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 requirements for the women to remain at home and uh, that uh, is one of the constraints, one of the factors that uh, prevents women from having access to employment. Uh, Dr. Uh, Chimu Chimba. Yes, you have the floor, please. Just uh, 30 seconds. The factors. Um, apart from the. Okay. Okay, thank you. So apart from the uh, social economic uh, uh, problem, the social, the norms that exist, there are also um, issues that have to do with the perception of society in terms of they view women more suited for care work and as such, they only recommend them for care work. And apart from that, one important aspect is educational attainment. A lot of women um, do not have the educational attainments, do not have the skills that will allow them to participate in the uh, formal employment. So that means that policies or uh, strategies that need to be implemented need to encourage them in order for them to get education attainment. But as they get that education attainment, employers uh, mainly prefer men compared to women. Uh, this already disadvantaged these women because they cannot get the work experience that they need. They cannot get the confidence that they need. They cannot become competitive in the labor market. This pushes them in informal work. Um, I think that's all I will submit within the given time. Bien. Thank you, Dr. Mingo. Merci. Uh, il nous reste encore quelques minutes. Thank you. We have uh, a few minutes. But I do not see any uh, new questions on the chat. Okay, je vois une, une, so I can voilà, see. I can see. Uh, uh, I think it is a comment. A I'm a bit. Uh, uh, worried about uh, the doubling of uh, uh, transfers uh, in by the Congolese uh, uh, government. I think this is a short-term uh, policy. How uh, uh, we, how long will it take uh, for the, uh, uh, the, the amounts to be increased and then doubled a num after a number of years? If you have any response uh, to that uh, question. And I think it, this uh, question is directed to Zizina. Otherwise, the other panelists could respond to that question. Zizina, you are in a very few seconds, please, you could respond. Thank you very much, Betty B, for your question. As we did point out, it was noticed that uh, the survey that we conducted uh, by the uh, National Statistical uh, Bureau, uh, we noticed that uh, uh, women do not get anything from the uh, Congolese uh, government. Uh, so they are already uh, discriminated against and uh, they can therefore uh, get these funds and that would enable them to double their productivity. Zizina? Oui, Dr. Emini. I do not want 
to stop you. Do you already have in place a money transfer policy in DRC? And, and how is it going to benefit women? That's what I was saying. We have already had money transfers, but uh, uh, they were going to men. And that is why we said that uh, we should uh, double that. Uh, and uh, the, the, those funds transfers, and they should go to women. The, we have it and it's going to men mainly. So if you want to respect the time that had been allocated to each uh, uh, panelist, I don't see any other specific uh, questions. And uh, I think that uh, we can uh, uh, stop uh, our webinar now. We would like to thank, uh, first of all, the panelists uh, that who have ah, really voilà. Je, comme si a it, it looks as if there may be other questions i do apologize for that i want to show that there d'accord mais je ne vois pas de nouvelles questions so no, I, i don't see any new uh, questions i don't know whether we can ask the questions directly uh, major Marjorie, do you want to ask your question directly Okay. So there is a question here to you, I guess to you. Uh, you don't think that women employment challenges are unique at different time frame. These time frame could be at first employment, at time of career promotion. Okay, what do you think about this? I don't uh, see who is Uh, asking this question, but uh, do you have uh, any reaction about this? Okay, this is from uh, Mr. Miari. He's saying that uh, he, don't, uh, he does not think that women employment challenges are unique at different time frame. This time frame could be at first employment a time of career promotion. Okay. But I think that this is a contribution. But what do you think about this? Boupe, do you have something to say? Yes, um, thank you, doctor. I believe that they are unique at different uh, time frames. Because when you're looking at a woman who's entering the labor market, she needs to have the experience. A lot of times they consider the age, uh, they consider other factors such as is she going to get married and when she has children, is she going to, especially if they're entering the formal employment, they're going to consider the fact that when she does have children, is she going to have entitlement to leave? And then uh, when you look at another woman who's already entered uh, the formal employment or entered the labor market, and she's already progressed and is now looking at uh, going to the other level, you find that or what you find is that um, uh, she's going to face different challenges, such as is she going to be able to perform at that level? Is she going to allocate the necessary time required there? Uh, so I think uh, they are different at different time frames. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Je pense que j'ai également I, I think that, that, that uh, the, 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 the good, the, there are also contributions that people are making. There's a Pastor Luwongo who is uh, confirming uh, that there are uh, cultural uh, limits, and especially in the Democratic Republic of the uh, Congo, that limit women's access to land. Uh, Uh, because the land uh, belongs exclusively to men and uh, not to women. And so women can only access the land through their husbands. So this had also been uh, uh, pointed out by uh, Madame Shabani. Is, are there any other questions? I wonder, uh, we have uh, two people who have raised their hands and I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask Manuel 
tu, 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 tu allow the person who wants to take the floor to, to take the floor. I don't see where this person is. Maybe the technical team can make it possible for whoever is asking for the floor to be able to put on the, the microphone. Olaf, somebody called Olaf, I think, has asked for the floor. Olaf, uh, you have the floor, please put on your microphone. Please put on your mic microphone, yes. Olaf. Uh, good afternoon. Hello. Uh, you have the floor. Yeah, um, my, my, I'm thinking that you, the, the times and seasons of women have different challenges. Um, of the opinion that women at childbearing ages are discriminated against because uh, they're childbearing, they're going to be looking after children, they're going to be running, which happens, which is true. But should there be allowances for that? And then when it comes to older women who should be maybe representative of women at board levels of organizations, why are we not seeing a lot of women? Why are we not seeing more women? You know, represented. Those are my kind of um. Those are the areas I think we should look at too. Thank you. Thank you too, Ola. So, uh, Dr. Simu Chimba, I think that uh, you have something to to say about this. Uh, the, uh, especially the first uh, part of the question, please. Okay. Yes. Uh, so when you look at the younger women who are just trying to get into formal employment or get into the labor market, there is need to actually have certain policies that would support their entrance into the labor market. Uh, however, it should be noted that there's been a study in Jordan that found that uh, most of these women, once they entered and then they got married, uh, they had a tendency to actually drop out. However, this was uh, a small percentage of women. So there is need to actually put in some complementary policies such as child care policies or parental care policies so that these women can actually stay longer in the labor market, especially if you look at them staying for formal employment. If this is not offered, most of the women find themselves in informal employment, especially the agriculture sector, if you look at it with regards to Africa, because they know that if they're in the agriculture sector, they can actually take their child along and they do not have to worry about employing someone else to look after their child. And then if you look at the older women, why don't we see more women represented up there? It's because I, I believe it starts from the lower level. If that can't enter easily at the lower level, then it means that fewer of them are going to actually find themselves at the top. Um, that is uh, my view. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, we, we, I think that uh, the other panelists uh, might agree with what we have just said. Uh, so we have another uh, person, another uh, Faustin Luwungu, who wants to take uh, the floor. Faustin, uh, you have the parole. Are you going to intervene in English or in French? Uh, merci, professor, for the uh, presentation. I hope you understand. Oui, you have the parole. You can speak a little bit louder. You have the floor. Please speak a bit louder. Merci beaucoup. Uh, je interviens pour. Uh... Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I, I take the floor to uh, respond to the concerns that were expressed by the different uh, uh, countries. Uh, and so somebody asked uh, the, 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 the question about uh, uh, the, the, the policy of uh, transfer, transferring money to women-headed uh, households. Uh, I don't think uh, it is possible to answer this uh, question exhaustively on the uh, doability of, they want to know whether this can be done in the short, the medium or the long term. And uh, our, our study, because I'm in the same, uh, I'm in the same my team as uh, Madam Zizina. Now, what, what we did, uh, we looked at uh, a public uh, policy that is uh, possible, that is uh, uh, viable. This is a policy that does exist, uh, uh, the, the issue of uh, transferring 
um, the, the transferring money to, to female-headed uh, headed, uh, households. Uh, this is something that happens in other countries and in, in, in the world. In, in Zimbabwe, there's such a policy that uh, uh, has uh, been uh, implemented. There is a study that talked about uh, the viability or perhaps uh, the uh, practicability of this, uh, of this in the DRC. But now the, the, the resources, the time, uh, would, would it be possible? So we'd have to look at it a little bit more closely to know to what extent is it possible over what period of time can this policy be implemented? Uh, and of course, uh, the same applies to the uh, increase of uh, access uh, of women uh, to land. Uh, we suggest that we propose 40%, uh, but the question is uh, to who and how can this be done? So these are policies, these are questions uh, that could be uh, answered uh, by additional studies. Uh, this was my contribution, uh, 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 Dr. Emini. Thank you for this uh, contribution. And I'd like just to point out uh, that uh, Constant Luhungu is uh, a co-author of uh, the study that has been undertaken in the Democratic uh, Republic of the Congo with uh, Madam Zina Shabani. We do have another contribution. Maybe it is a question from Edme Yakundoy. I think it is from... Uh, uh, Senegal, and I think that we can give him uh, the floor as well. Edme, you have the floor. Edme, are you there? Uh, do you want to ask your question directly? So please uh, put on your microphone. Uh, good morning, uh, Professor. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, allow me to uh, thank uh, the, the, the panelists uh, for uh, the very uh, useful uh, presentations uh, that they made. Uh, I wanted uh, to perhaps uh, look at the issue of um, a women's role at the household level and especially the social role that women have uh, to uh, play. And I wanted to know whether there were policies that, or, the, or whether there are any initiatives at all at uh, the level of the different uh, countries that uh, uh, would uh, try to lighten the, 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 the burden of, how, of work at the household uh, level, which is really on the shoulders of women, women who may be employed elsewhere, or, or whether there could be an institution, institutional framework that would make it possible for a woman who is also a mother, perhaps, uh, or perhaps even uh, the, the, the father to have uh, uh, paternal or maternal, uh, maternity or paternity leaves. Uh, now in Senegal, the maternity or paternity Maternity, we do have a maternity leave in the formal sector, but um, uh, for paternity leave, um, there is uh, there, there, there are not so many days uh, that uh, are given to men. So I wanted to know for for other countries, uh, do they have a paternity leave? And if so, how many days? I think that the, the, the question uh, has come from somebody in uh, Senegal. And I think this question uh, is addressed to the other countries uh, that are represented here, the Democratic Republic of the Congo and uh, Zambia. Uh, yes. Mupe, do, do you want to answer? Do you have any a reaction? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Min. Um, so if you look at uh, having paternity leave and maternity leave in Zambia, it does exist and it exists more for formal employment. In fact, we have a new employment uh, policy that actually extended the maternity leave uh, from about three months to four months. Uh, it does have paternity leave of about uh, one month as well. So uh, there are certain policies, but they are mainly focused in formal employment. As uh, for informal, uh, you will not find uh, such uh, policies that support uh, the women. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think that uh, this is what we can say at this time. Maintenant, nous avons encore une uh, main levée. We do have somebody else asking uh, uh, for the floor. Uh, that is from Charles Bahati. We can give him the floor. 
Charles Bahati. Charles Bahati, you have the floor. Charles, please put on your mic. Unmute your mic, please. We don't seem to be getting uh, Charles. As we wait for his problem to be solved, we have another question. What challenges that would you, I believe they're talking about, uh, uh, what solution would you propose as far as adequation uh, between women employment and the employment that there is. I do not know who uh, has asked that question, but he was talking about uh, challenges as far as uh, uh, training for women is concerned. That is, the, is the training adequate for the employment that is available? Thank you very much for this question. This is a major challenge because it, we talk about uh, uh, improving training, but we should have um, a training that uh, uh, is adapted uh, to the need of uh, the market. So we say that uh, women should be be, should have higher levels of education, but we do not pay enough attention to the type of education or the type of training that is being provided. So we do have challenge, we have challenges in that respect. So we need to have training that is targeted on to the targets, the needs of the market. Thank you very much for this question. Thank you very much for your response. Although for the time being, we have not looked into the is, is, issue of, uh, uh, of suitable uh, employment or suitable training or education. Perhaps this is something we should look into in our uh, research. We have other people who want to take the floor. I think uh, with uh, uh, those who are uh, uh, managing uh, the webinar, they could let us know whether we can take more uh, interventions. Michael Limbuko, who would like to take the floor uh, directly Mike. to make a comment. Mike, you have the floor. Uh, Mike Limbuko, j'espère que vous me captez. Bonjour, uh, good afternoon. I just wanted to respond uh, to Fostan's uh, uh, reaction um, Fostan to the issue of uh, money transfer. I think we have in uh, DRC uh, transfer, which uh, has to do with uh, uh, social protection. But we, it also goes for uh, careers in agriculture. What we have done in DRC is about uh, 20 to uh, 15 to 20 dollars per person. If there are vulnerable uh, households, uh, which uh, are women headed uh, households. As this is what I wanted to add that uh, there is uh, a policy that guides uh, money transfers. And how the question is how can we increase uh, these uh, amounts for? Uh, uh, Congo, uh, Brazzaville, we 
we have uh, uh, different amounts going to each households. Thank you very much. I think this is a very uh, useful clarification and it uh, shows that uh, this is a policy uh, that can be implemented. Thank you very much for your contribution. For, uh, to, we have uh, Charles Bahati who has come up with a question on the chat. Uh, we t I don't know if it's a contribution or a comment. He is saying that uh, women ha do not uh, or, 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 or do not want to risk, whereas men are ready to take uh, up risks and this could have an impact on gender inequality. This is something that is said by Charles. I do not know if he wants a response from the panelists. Do you have anything to say to what Charles has said? That women do not like to take risks. Yes. Is there anybody who would like to take the floor on that? As you uh, think about this quest, uh, this uh, uh, contribution, I think uh, uh, this uh, question of not wanting to take risk may depend on the type of employment that you are dealing with, because we should uh, give evidence of uh, that. Uh, so I think this is a comment uh, that has been made, but we think that uh, there are more important uh, factors that uh, determine that than just not wanting to take risks. Having said that, I would like to thank uh, each one of you, first of all, the participants who showed a lot of interest in this particular theme. I would also like to thank those that the panelists who gave us information and their suggestions so that this gap that divides the different genders can be filled and it's been a whole uh, a whole uh, century that we have been working on that i think we have made some uh, some progress i think uh, there is uh, uh, some measures that have been taken at the international level to have a certain percentage of each one of the genders but uh, the gap remains and the solutions that have been proposed these are uh, contributions that would enable acceleration of uh, the achievement of of the objectives that is in the whole world. But uh, we note that we can have a general of policies, uh, but we want more targeted policies. So what uh, we have, uh, uh, the measures that have been uh, taken today, like subsidy for salaries, uh, there is transfers, uh, uh, reduction of uh, in, in in a taxation, this or funds to uh, transfers to women. I think these are contributions. Uh, these are uh, policies uh, that uh, would lead to uh, acceleration of the achievement of this objective. So these uh, policies for reducing the gap we need to have more targeted uh, policies. Otherwise, we run the risk of uh, uh, 
uh, not uh, achieving these objectives, be it in the short, medium or long term. So this is what uh, I would uh, I would like to appeal to the different uh, uh, players, uh, particularly those in the public sector to take uh, these uh, proposals into consideration and uh, see whether uh, they can be implemented. Having said that, I'm going to close uh, this uh, webinar uh, in the hope uh, that uh, we are going to meet uh, again in other uh, webinars uh, organized by PEP. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, I would like to announce that there is another women webinar on uh, women making gender equality center. Uh, finance. Ce webinar est prévu pour le 1er avril. This uh, webinar will take place on the 1st of April and you can go to the uh, PEP website to register for this webinar and also look uh, at uh, all the other studies that you can find on, uh, on uh, the PEP website, uh, uh, studies that have to do with uh, uh, women empowerment and uh, Thank, I would like uh, now to say thank you very much for your participation in this webinar and see you again. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you.